Welcome back everybody to part 16b of our Unity Beginners tutorial series. We're going to pick up from where we left off last time by addressing an issue that may sometimes result in us losing two lives instead of one when we hit a spike or an enemy. And we will wrap up by applying a hit confirm to our enemies so our players have better feedback with regards to dealing damage to them. I hope you got a good brew, coffee, cold drink by your side. It's time to crack on. First, a quick update with regards to an off-camera change I made to avoid any confusion. I've gone ahead and renamed my enemies. I now have a ground orange enemy and a platform red enemy. By all means, call your game objects whatever you like, what's easiest for you. That's one of the beauties of Unity. You can make the projects your own. Now, let's address this issue with the inconsistencies with regards to our life loss. Sometimes we lose one, sometimes we lose two when we hit spikes or enemies. Here's a little clip of what some of you may have experienced during playtesting. I'm hitting the spikes per normal and so far I'm losing just one life at a time. But occasionally we will lose two. I've gone from five to three and again three to one. There's a simple explanation for this. So let's take a look and hop back into Unity. The root of the problem lies within the colliders on our player game object. We have our main collider on the body of our player and the collider that is our stomper. In our player controller script, we wrote an on trigger enter 2D function that said, whenever the player makes a collision with any game object with the tag of spike or enemy, it calls upon the take life function, hence we lose one life. That function is being called for each collider that makes contact with the spike or enemy game objects, hence why we sometimes are losing two lives. There is a very quick and easy fix for this. And it's all to do with what layers we assign to our game objects. So all we've got to do is change that. Let's go to the player prefab, select the stomper, and where it says layer, let's add some layers. We're going to add three new layers. The first one will be stomper, Second one will be spikes, and the third one, the hurt box, as we may want to stop the hurt box from colliding with certain objects too. Then go to the stomper and assign the stomper layer to it. That will update the player in all scenes. Then we need to do the same for our spikes. Select the spikes layer for those. Then let's go back into our scene, go to our enemies, our collider, Hurt box and add the hurt box. Do that for the red enemy as well. Once those have been made, let's go to edit, project settings, go to our layer collision matrix, where like last time, we're going to deselect some boxes. For example, we chose enemies to deselect enemy so the enemies do not collide with one another because they're on the same layer. So our stomper, we don't want to collide with enemies. So go down from stomper, deselect enemy. Our spikes also don't want to interact with the stomper. So go down from spikes, deselect stomper. And we're gonna want our enemies to pass through each other. So our hurt boxes will ignore everything on the hurt box. And that is all we have to do to fix the issue of where we're losing two lives instead of one. So now let's move on to the next item. Let's take another look at our enemies now, as Aldemar wrote, asking what should he do if he wants his enemies to have free HP or more. Thank you very much, Aldemar. The solution is rather simple. Just go to your enemy hurtbox collider that has the enemy HP script, and you can input whatever value you like for your enemy's HP. I'm gonna punch in free. However, if we go and play test, and when you go over to the enemy and jump on its head, you will notice other than the bounce, there's no feedback nor indication we're doing damage until the point in which it dies. We're gonna create a simple hit confirm that will have the enemy flash whenever it is dealt damage. And we're going to do that in the enemy HP script. To create the flash for our hit confirm, we're going to want to access the sprite renderer component on the parent enemy game object. So let's set a private sprite renderer and we can call it sprite rend. Then of course, we're gonna to want to get the component from the parent. So underneath, let's type in 
sprite rend equal transform dot parent dot get component and of course that will be the sprite renderer happy days now let's go to the bottom and write our hit confirm and we shall write it as an enumerator called hit confirm and we shall open it up with an if statement because we only want our enemies to flash when they take damage so long as their health is above zero because at zero we don't need them to flash we can see the enemy has been defeated so if the current hp is greater than zero then of course we're going to turn the sprite renderer off and on again and to do that of course we need to call upon the sprite rend dot enabled equals false to turn it off then we need the yield statement for how long yield return new wait four seconds and we'll do it at 0 0.1 0 0.1 then after 0 0.1 seconds turn the sprite renderer back on again sprite rend dot enabled equals true and there we are that's our hit confirm and then we will have to call upon it in the take damage function so just underneath start coroutine and that coroutine will be hit confirm there we go save that now and let's head back into unity to see it in action and now when we go over to the enemy and jump on his head he'll flash to indicate he's taken damage to the point in which he's defeated there we go that works well let's head back into unity now and i think it's time our enemies deserved to be made into prefabs so drag them into the prefabs folder we can now go through our levels at your own leisure of course and add your enemy prefabs to them as you see fit so have fun doing that then save our scene and i'm going to delete my enemies go to my level and delete everything but the goal pole, the ceiling, ground and walls to create a fresh scene which we're going to save as in the scenes folder as the final level for our game the boss level for in the next few videos we're going to learn how to wrap up our project with one mighty boss fight thank you very much for watching guys i know you've been working hard on your projects keep up the awesome effort your feedback and responses have been great and they've inspired us to plan more tutorials in the future so please do keep an eye out for those and should you need any help at all feel free to get in touch with us either here or on our social media and should you need any references to the code there will always be links in the description below have fun adding your enemy prefabs to your levels i'm sure they will provide a fun challenge for your players because very soon they will face a mighty boss. Take care guys and I will see you soon.